If you're a small business owner, either as a limited company or as a sole trader, and you decide to either sell or close your business down, then you can avoid a significant amount of capital gains tax by applying for BADR. That is Business Asset Disposal Relief, which used to be known as Entrepreneur's Relief. In this video, we will cover a refresher on the basics of capital gains tax. What exactly is BADR, that is Business Asset Disposal Relief? Who and what qualifies for BADR? And finally, how much tax can you save with BADR? So before we get into what business asset disposal relief is and how you can avoid a significant amount of tax with it, it's worth having a refresher on the basics of capital gains tax uh, so you can get some context. And when I use the word avoid, it refers to saving a significant amount of tax and I will show you with a common example how you can potentially reduce your tax bill by around 74%. As the name suggests, capital gains tax is a tax on capital gains. Capital is wealth in the form of money or property that is used to make more wealth and again is an increase in the value of that wealth. The main rates of capital gains tax here in the UK in the current 21-22 tax year are as follows. If you are a basic rate income taxpayer then you will pay either 10% or 18% on all capital gains realised in the tax year. The 18% relates to gains on residential property whilst the 10% rate is pretty much everything else. If you are a higher or additional rate income taxpayer, then you will pay either 20% or 28% on capital gains realised in the tax share. Again, the 28% rate relates to residential property. As an individual UK tax resident, you get a capital gains annual exemption of £12,300. So in other words, all capital gains of up to £12,300 are tax-free, regardless of whether it's residential property or any other type of capital gain. If you are married or in a civil partnership, then you enjoy one capital gains tax exemption each. So you and your partner can have £24,600 of tax-free capital gains per year. In all, capital gains tax rates are more favourable than income tax rates here in the UK, with income tax rates ranging from 20% at a basic level up to 45% to the additional level. If you want to find out more about the basics of capital gains tax, then head on to our comprehensive video on this by clicking on the card above. At the beginning of April, we granted early access to the Accounting and Tax Academy membership site. In July of this year, we're opening our doors to everyone. Our members will have access to in-depth tutorials, free downloads and exclusive discounts. And the best part is it's absolutely free to join. Head to the link in the description box below to register your interest today. Business Asset Disposal Relief was previously known as Entrepreneur's Relief and was renamed in 2020. It is in effect a capital gains tax relief, the key word being relief here, and I'll explain this later in the video. The effective rate of capital gains tax with Business Asset Disposal Relief is only 10%, and it allows each individual UK taxpayer to have a lifetime capital gains of up to £1 million, tax at just 10%, although this lifetime limit is less Less generous than £10 million it used to be. BADR applies in certain situations and the two most common are as follows. Number one is when you dispose, that is sell the shares in your company, business and realise a capital gain on the sale. And number two is when you dispose of your company shares, when you've stopped trading and decide to liquidate your company and there are substantial funds it can distribute to you as a shareholder. And if you are a sole trader or partnership based business, you can get business asset disposal relief under section 16912 AMB of the Taxation of Chargeable Gains Act in 1992 in similar circumstances as the above two points. In a nutshell, business asset disposal relief applies to trading businesses, that is regular businesses that carry on in the normal course of business. The opposite of a trading business is an investment business, that is a business that carries on with the purpose of investing and earning passive incomes and most importantly capital gains. So for example, if you are a cryptocurrency investor, this would be categorised as an investment business by HMRC. 
So it's really important you understand whether your business is classified as a trading or non-trading business, like an investment business for example, or it could have a mixture of both. HMRC guidance per CG 64053 define a trading company as a company carrying on trading activities whose activities do not include a substantial extent, in practice more than 20% of activities other than trading activities. So to summarize, the main qualifying criteria for company owners is as follows. Number one, your company must be your personal company. Generally speaking, this means you must own at least 5% of the ordinary shareholding. Number two, you must be an officer, in other words, a director or employee of the company. And finally, as we've already established, your company must be a trading company. Each of these rules must be satisfied for at least two years before your company is either sold or liquidated in order to qualify for BADR under the current rules. In short, you can save a significant amount of tax if you qualify for an applied business asset disposal relief. So it is an option well worth educating yourself about and pursuing if your numbers work for you. I'll help you get an idea of significant with a common numerical example I have come across in years of practice as follows. George has a trading business which he operates through a limited company called George Graham Designs Limited. He's a director of his company and holds 100% of the share capital. The business has been running for five years and George has decided now to call it a day and close his business down. He explored the possibility of selling the business but found buyers were reluctant as the main revenue earning asset is George himself and he wanted to leave the business straight after any sale. In addition, the company only has two clients who are very loyal to George. The company has £80,000 of net assets on its balance sheet. In other words, after having paid off all the money the company owes to suppliers, creditors and importantly the taxman, £80,000 remains in liquid cash available to distribute to the shareholders. That is George. So he has approached us for some advice and wants to know how we can pay the least amount of tax and get this £80,000 out of his company. One of the first options George has is to simply take the funds out of the company as a dividend. By doing this, George personally will then become liable to dividends tax, and that could range from 7.5% to 32.5%, up to 38.1%. You see, it all depends on his total aggregate income in the 21-22 tax year. Let's assume he is a higher rate taxpayer, which is a common scenario, and therefore he would pay £80,000 times 32.5%, which is £26,000 personally as an individual in dividend tax. The next option would be to close his company down formally by way of what is known as a member's voluntary liquidation. This is a formal procedure to close down and dissolve George Graham Designs Limited. With a member's voluntary liquidation, the £80,000 can be distributed to George and classified as a capital distribution. Remember earlier, if George took the £80,000 as a dividend, it would have been classed as income and subject to dividend tax, which is another form of income tax. Well, a capital distribution is subject to capital gains tax. And as we can recall from the first part of this video, capital gains tax rates in the UK are more favorable than income tax rates. So the 80,000 pounds will be subject to the capital gains tax in the 21-22 tax year, payable by George personally at either 20% or 10%. Again, it all depends upon his total personal taxable income in this tax year. But in George's case, it is likely he's gonna pay perhaps 10% on some of the 80,000 and 20% on the rest the proportion and let's not forget George's capital gains tax allowance for the year of £12,300. But where does BADR, Business Asset Disposal Relief, come into it? Assuming George meets the qualifying criteria outlined earlier in the video, then BADR is a capital gains tax relief. So in other words, the capital gains tax rate is flattened out to just 10% for the entire £80,000. And this is after George gets his capital gains tax allowance for the year of £12,300. So the taxable part is £80,000 less £12,300, which equals £67,700. So by going down a formal MVO route and applying BADR, George could save, paying a standard dividend, he pays £26,000 in tax, 
capital distribution plus BADR, £6,770 in tax, providing a total tax saving of £19,230. Now that is a whopping 74% tax saving. So BADR would have also applied had George successfully managed to sell his business to a third party and realised the capital gain. And what's more, he wouldn't have had to go down an MVL or any formal procedure as it's just a sale. I hope this video has helped you understand how to avoid capital gains tax using business asset disposal relief and taking you one step closer to knowing your numbers. As always, let me know in the comments your thoughts on today's video or if there are any topics you'd like us to cover in the future. Finally, be sure to like and subscribe as this really does help us to get our content out there. This is Tony Daniel for the Accounting and Tax Academy. Thanks for tuning in.